Hi, this is Allison Hadley. I'm licensed massage therapist in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm also the owner of Wonderland Mobile Massage. Um, uh, about a few months ago, in the beginning of January, I did a blog post on how to make infused oils, which is um, what I use for my massage oil. I, I take fractionated coconut oil and um, infuse dried herbs in them, and that's what I use as my massage oil. So in January, I made one that was with lavender, uh, rosemary, and um, catnip. And again, that's with the dried plant material. And I ran out of that because I loved it so much. All my clients loved it, and um, I actually used it myself uh, after getting out of the shower, just rubbing it all over my skin. It really helped keep my skin moisturized throughout the winter and all that good stuff. Um, so since I'm almost out of it, a few weeks ago I started infusing um, some chickweed in fractionated coconut oil and it is ready to be strained. Um, I just wanted to show you, I could have used a, a little more coconut oil in this just because you want at least like an inch or so um, excess oil above the plant material. That way you're just ensuring that everything is completely saturated and um, sometimes if it if the plant material comes above the oil line it has a better chance of molding so you just want to make sure everything is really submerged in the oil. I guess I guess I did have some some stuff floated to the top so it kinda of made it look like um, there wasn't enough oil and I did add some but uh, you just want to make sure that you have some some oil an oil gap covering all of the plant material so I chose to do chickweed um, because it's really abundant right now um, it's in bloom you probably have it all over your yard especially if you're in the south if you're in the north um, it'll it'll probably be a month or so before you'll start seeing chickweed um, you'll see it come up like mixed in with the dandelions and the and the clover um, all over your yard. So I've got some actually growing in a pot um, on my balcony because I don't have a yard, but like it mysteriously appeared there. It, it it started sprouting a few months ago, and I was like, oh, let it grow, see what it <laughs> see what it ends up being, and it ended up being chickweed. Um, so it was probably like a bird or a squirrel somehow like um, dropped the seeds, or maybe just in the wind. Because um, actually all the stuff that you can see floating on the top here is like um, the the pollen from the from the chickweed there it's like l little fine hairs that blow around in the wind so just so that you can see what the fresh plant looks like um, it's got this tiny white flower that kind of looks like a star that's where it gets or uh, that's how it got its Latin name Stellaria media um, and you you typically want to use it fresh. Um, you can put it in your salad. You can juice it. You can steam it. You can boil it. Um, you can stir fry it. And it's it's incredibly high in nutrients: um, iron, calcium, um, magnesium, vitamin B, and very high in vitamin C. Um, so it's just a really good nutrient green. Um, that you can ingest internally. But it's also um, used, and you can use it fresh for as a poultice to heal wounds um, and to treat uh, skin irritations. It's really great for uh, to make a poultice with it. Um, but I decided to dry, I had a whole bunch of it dried and I just really wanted to make an oil with it because it, it is wound healing. It, it helps um, it helps uh, reduce like very hot conditions like or redness in your skin um, bug bites um, it will also draw out infection and um, it kind of reduces inflammation by reducing the heat um, that's going on with an infection or anything like that um, again taken in internally it's good for reducing fevers as well um, but uh, chickweed contains steroidal sap saponins which are kind of like soap like materials it's really great at emulsifying and breaking stuff down so 
it will help dissolve cysts and one of the reasons that you get so much nutrients out of it is because it help, um, the saponins break down the cell walls of and um, make the nutrients easier to absorb into the cells so it, it kind of weakens the cell walls so that it's able to absorb more nutrients um, and the same same thing with um, fighting infection and bacteria it's really great at dissolving the bacteria cell walls so it helps break them down and you can fight infection better that way um, so I just happened to have some dried and wanted to make an oil with it um, I think it's just uh, gonna be good for the skin and um, I thought it'd be kind of cool to show how I strain it because I usually just take pictures of all the different steps that I do so um, yeah um, you'll need um, a strainer and this is like a really old mesh strainer so I'm actually going to strain it twice because um, the holes are really big and it actually has like <laughs> a hole right in the bottom so. Um, so I'm going to come back and strain it a second time with this smaller tea strainer. Um, and then, okay, so I'm also going to use some funnels. I have this really awesome funnel set that has, um, one of the funnels is for a mason jar, and then it has two sizes of other funnels that, um, I'll, I'll use these to actually put them into my oil bottle because they have a smaller opening in the top. Um, I love this mason jar one though. I use it all the time for everything. Probably got it on Amazon. I always get, them, get everything on Amazon. Okay. So I'm just going to place the funnel into the jar and then I place the strainer on top of it. Um, I'm going to put it back here so that you can see it. And all I do is I take the lid off and dump it, dump it in there. And I want to get all of the plant material out of the jar. And then I use the weight of the jar to press it down and kind of squeeze squeeze the oil out. There's Forgot my paper towels. You always need paper towels when you're working with oil. Um, this is just a skewer that I helped get out the, the chickweed and I just let it sit there for a while um, it's like I don't know if you can hear it but it's still straining um, and I'm, I'll go back and press down on it make sure it's all squeezed out so that you're getting like all of the all of the, the good nutrients that are in chickweed um, so while that's straining, I uh, wanted to talk to you about uh, the new essential oil blend that I'm making for the month of April. April is the is um, Stress Awareness Month, uh, so um, I'm going to make a blend with um, frankincense, lavender, and um, lemongrass again. I, I used lemongrass last month. I just really love the way it smells. I think it's really uplifting. Um, it is good for psychic awareness and purification and it's also just really uplifting. Um, most, even though lemongrass isn't a citrus plant, it still has those properties that citrus does and most citrus oils are completely uplifting. Um, and then lavender, we all know lavender, it's calming, it stress reduction. Um, it, 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 it's um, pretty common in the spa industry. Um, pretty much any massage oil you buy in the store is gonna have lavender in it. Candles have lavender in it. Um, you just wanna be really careful about making sure that they are actually essential oils used to um, scent uh, those things because 
um, lavender fragrance is actually not real. It's, in, it's synthetic. Um, so you just want to make sure you're getting a high quality product with fresh lavender essential oil in it. Um, and then frankincense, I mean, it's just so, uh, it, it, and it um, increases your connection to your spirituality and to your soul and kind of like a higher a higher um, being to the universe, God, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's great for meditation. It's also um, stress reducing and it reduces tension as well. Um, so I picked those three. I'm not actually going to make the blend in the 10 milliliter bottle like I did last week. Um, simply because frankincense is so expensive, I don't want to use it if um, I'm not going to use it. So, <laughs> um, I was just going to show you how I create blends and how I figure out like things um, if things will like work well together. Because um, sometimes you don't you don't want it to be like too overpowering. Like lemongrass is so strong. And I don't know if you remember last week I added extra lemongrass because I love it so much. But it actually kind of came out a little strong. So for a 10 milliliter bottle, I would not do more than 20 drops. I think I did about 30 last time. And it's just such a small amount of coconut oil that 30 drops of essential oils is, is a lot. Um, so if you were going to make something this side, I, I would do 20 or less, really. Um, because like there's the essential oils are so concentrated and um, you just you just don't need that much, very much of it. Just a few drops goes a long way. Um, so what I do is I take um, tissue, or you can use strips of paper. Um, strips of paper um, works well, but um, it when you put the drop of essential oil on. The paper it kind of slides around a little bit before it absorbs into the paper so you might end up spilling it all over the place like I usually do <laughs> so tissue works better and this is also a great idea if you're sick um, you can carry around like something like eucalyptus or peppermint um, to kind of smell keep it in your pocket you smell it throughout the day just so that you can have those um, the uh, opening of the lungs that eucalyptus is good for and um, antibacterial and all that good stuff. So this is a little trick if you if if ever you're sick or even this time of year for allergies you can um, use different essential oils to help open up your sinuses and and stuff like that. You just carry it, put a few drops on here and carry it with you and you can inhale it whenever you need to. So I've got a, a few um, pieces of toilet paper or paper towel here and I'm just going to take like a drop at a time and this frankincense comes out so fast and it's so expensive and I don't want to waste it so it's really hard to get one drop of this um, so I just start out with one drop of each of the oils that I'm thinking about using um, so this is lavender See, that one came out fast, too. <laughs> so right now it's like two drops of lavender and one drop of frankincense. I'm going to try to do just one drop of lemongrass. Yeah, the lemongrass is really strong. Because the lemongrass is too strong, so you start out with basically one drop of each, and then you kind of you, you smell and see like which notes are coming through or which notes are stronger. And I'm really smelling a lot of the lemongrass, so like this helps you figure out like what ratio you want to do. I'm definitely gonna do like two, um, like your like my ratio I think is gonna end up being two. Two frankincense, two lavender, to one every one drop of um, lemongrass. And you can kind of wave it around just so that you're getting like all three of the scents. 
yeah so definitely that that would be my ratio for um, making a blend so like if if I was doing you want to do two to two to one um, if I was doing this 10 milliliter bottle I'd probably do like four four frankincense four lavender and to two ro to um two lemongrass because the lemongrass is just um, way more powerful than the other ones are and after it sits a while smell it again and see if it's yeah, I really like it that, like that. So yeah, after you let this sit and strain, see you can you can like still like squeeze out more plant material. I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit so that. Um, All of it gets strained out there. And I'm actually really surprised there's not that much plant material in here, so I'm still going to strain it again with a smaller strainer um, to put it into my massage oil bottle, but. Um, I'm, I'm pretty surprised that there's not that much plant material in there. So you just want to, um, I let it sit for a while, um, just so that it all gets squeezed out. Um, cause it really, um, chickweed itself is really absorbent. Um, it's part of the, it has like a very drawing quality. That's why you want, uh, it's really great to use as a pulse, a poultice to draw out infection and heal wounds. But so, yeah, every time I push down on it, it's still kind of squeeze. Um, I can hear some coming out still. So I'll just let it sit there for a while, and then afterwards, I'll strain it with the smaller strainer and use one of these smaller funnels um, to put it into my massage bottle. And this is what I use for my massage oil. Um, I'm obviously going to. That's not that much oil. That's not going to last very long for me. Um, so if you have any ideas of like what other herbs, herb infused oils you'd be interested in learning about, um, please comment below and I'm going to leave links to my website and links to my blog so that you can see um, the, the infused oil that I made last time and it has all the steps on there. Um, and book a aromatherapy massage and you'll get your own little 10 milliliter stress reducing oil um, made just for you. Uh, so thanks for watching, have a good day, and go out and see if you can find some chickweed in your yard and put it in your salad for dinner. <laughs> have a good night.